During excavations in Egypt during the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat grains, roughly 5,000 year old, in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. Now someone decided to sow the ancient grains and to their amazement, they grew. Our faith in the resurrection will be like those dormant grains unless we believe that Jesus is present with us as a real living person. In the second reading today, for instance, he says, I am the living one. Even though we don't see him in the flesh, he touches my life in the here and now with his reassuring presence, especially in the Mass and the other sacraments. There's an old French proverb which says, God often visits us but mostly we're not at home, like doubting Thomas in today's Gospel. We're not at home if our faith in him is merely academic, all head, no heart. We're not at home if we believe that science has the answer to everything. That doesn't at all mean the church is anti-science, as some make out. The first observatory in the world, for instance, was in the Vatican, so the church was studying the stars long before anybody else. The first universities in Europe, which became the model of all universities, were mostly founded by the church and included faculties on natural philosophy and physics. I know that the church censured Galileo, but it wasn't because the church discounted his theory that the earth circled the sun, as some make out but because they wanted him to treat it as a hypothesis rather than the irrefutable truth, but of course he wouldn't listen. That was the nub of the problem. The Protestant church at the time actually condemned his theory as anti-scriptural. Now that's what happens when the Bible is interpreted too literally. Thomas, the apostle, would not believe that Jesus had risen until he'd seen him in the flesh. But Jesus gently tells him, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, that includes you and me. The resurrection has more to do with the transformation of the inner man or woman than seeing Jesus in the flesh. I think it's rather interesting to know that on the four or five occasions when he appeared to his disciples after the resurrection, facial recognition wasn't high on his agenda. If Jesus in the flesh were to walk into this church right now after the dust had settled, would there be any guarantee that we would go out and live better lives on the strength of it? I doubt it very much. The words of Jesus recorded in scripture are far more important than glimpsing Jesus in the flesh. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. In the same gospel, Jesus is described as the word made flesh. Now when through the power of the Spirit, his words become enfleshed in us. Then the power of Christ's resurrection will indeed shine through our words and actions. We will be, as St. Augustine says, Easter people, not just in name, but also in fact. The doctrine of the resurrection is the firm bedrock on which our faith is built tamper with that and we shake its very foundations. St. Paul reminds us that if Christ is not risen then all our believing comes to nothing. The church wasn't built on doubting Thomases but on the unshakable belief that Jesus rose from the dead in his human body and he's sacramentally with us in the church until the end of time, like he said he would. Now, thank you all very much for listening, and God bless you all. Oh.